Dooby dooby. Hey guys, it's Graham. When I originally designed the uh, effector to suit and be able to mount a mosquito hot end onto my Predator, within the design I added some extra holes and tapped them in three with the vision that they may be able to be used later on for mounting some sort of option. Well, one of those options that I've just recently created is to be able to mount a halo light. And I'll show you a bit later on in the video that actually functioning on my Predator. Now, this is a 100 milliliters halo light from memory. It's 100 millimeters outside and it's actually, it looks like about 80... 3.5 millimeters inside. It's a fairly standard halo light that you can get. Um, I bought these as a packet of two. It's got the part number 2F04-09. I bought it on eBay and it states that it has 33 LEDs. These are just white LEDs. So the mount that I created for it, which matches the hot end, uh, can be printed. And it has some extrusions here that allow it to sit directly lined up with those M3 tapped holes so it can be screwed to the effector. Now, when you buy the Halo light, they uh, usually come with opening this up, a very short cable. So I unsoldered that and I soldered on an appropriately longer piece of uh, cable to uh, go up to be at the same length to match these uh, plug positions when the hot end is, uh, or the effector is plugged into the Predator. I haven't terminated that yet because in order to secure this into the uh, 3D print, it has a hole and the plug won't go into it. I could design this a little bit away and have a notch so that that could do the same way so the plug could be attached it's it's really much of a muchness but that this halo light actually fits into a recessed groove within this and um, that just takes a few dabs of glue I, I've used epoxy to uh, just glue that and put it in position and then I've also added a little bit of the extra epoxy around the cable entry here so that um, it's not going to flex and, uh, and break off. And that's about it. When you do get these lights, you'll find some little tags um, from when these have been manufactured in, in mass. And uh, you've just got to file those little tags off or just cut them off with a pair of side cutters and just trim them a little bit. And then that basically fits onto the hot end, orient the cable so that it comes out around the same position as the other cables and uh, drop that in. There are three M3 screws that go through here. And I won't do all of these up, but they go through and Secure this onto the effector. And yeah, there we go. I've also uh, put recesses on these screws as well. I won't put them all, all in so that they uh, sit flush. Uh, you could print that in whatever material I like. It could be black, blue. I just printed this one in blue because I had it in the printer at the time and it sort of matches the colour of this effector. But uh, that's about it. The other point about um, 
when this is installed into the Predator and after you've terminated it, you've got to run a separate wire down um, from, the, from the top, the same uh, route that uh, the rest of these cables go. And what I installed in the Predator, and I'll, I'll post some um, still images at the end of the video, is uh, one of these. And uh, these are a dime a dozen on, uh, on eBay. It's an LED controller. It uh, can take five to 24 volts in, so it can go straight into the power supply of the Predator. Uh, you can cut this off and, and wire it in, or it's, it's just got these normal um, plugs. Uh, you can uh, do whatever you like with that. But these little controllers are really nice uh, because they come with a little RF remote. So this can be inside the uh, top of the Predator. And again, I'll show you some, some still photos of how that's actually done and wired in. But this little controller um, allows you to turn these LED lights off and on and control the brightness of them uh, infinitely or 100%, 50%, 25%. It's got other modes which make them flash and do other sorts of things like that. But it's just a very neat little thing. These, I don't know what I paid for this one. I, it was a little while ago that I bought it. Um, that's the label, RF Wireless Remote LED Controller. And um, I don't think there were much. I think they were like $10 or something like that on, on eBay. And um, I use these for my other LED lighting projects. So when I take a little video and add that on to this with um, showing you, you'll see just how this works and just how effective it is for uh, controlling the brightness of these LEDs. Because honestly, you don't want to run these flat out full brightness because it's a little bit blinding and uh, just unnecessary. So uh, that's uh, the basic idea of that. Now, if I just take this off, one of the other ideas I had when I added these extra mounting holes, and I could have probably added some more, but it was, and I don't use one of these. If you've got a, uh, a BL Touch, um, and I haven't made an adapter yet for it, but it would be quite easy to make a little adapter so that was used that screw to secure it, and um, you can attach a BL Touch to uh, to my effector if you want. I don't. I have this BL Touch. I've never installed it. I don't use it yet, but it's just there for one day when I decide I might want to uh, install a BL Touch. So we'll go over to the printer now and I'll show you this actually in operation with the, uh, the LEDs all lit up. I've got the little RF remote control mounted on here with a little bit of double-sided tape. Inside and around this location here is the little um, RF receiver controller and uh, power for it comes down here. You can see I've already got LEDs up here which are fixed. Power comes down here. There's a separate connector uh, in, with, in one of these. What I did for that particular connector for the power for that, so I don't get them confused with anything else, I actually inverted, swapped the plug and the socket around so it can only go in one, uh, one direction. It just makes it easy for me to identify it. And the cable goes down here and then the halo light is mounted under here. So if I go up here, you can see I've got my various controls at the light on and off power. I can then set it to various fixed brightnesses, 50, 25, 100, and then I can also indefinitely variable the um, brightness using these two plus and minus buttons here. So if I now just move the camera down to there, you can see I'll turn it on. And that's currently, that's 100%, you can see that's, Pretty bright and uh, a little bit glary, so I can go 50%. And you can see it's a really nice, subtle way that it uh, dims it, and then 25%. And 25% is uh, pretty good.
for uh, being able to use it. You could actually use this control with any other type of light that you might have on your system. I could also uh, use it to control these ones on the side that I added, you know, quite some time ago. It's uh, really up to you. So, as I said before, I'll put some stills of the mounting in here, but the little controller literally just goes straight onto the power supply. It's powered all the time, and I can then use this little remote to turn it off and on. There's, that's the power off and on button there. Off, on, and uh, away we go. As I say, it's got various other modes here that can do various flashing and all sorts of strobe sort of type effects, but uh, you don't want those. I only use it basically just for this function, just for the top part here, which allows me to control the brightness. Brightness um, up, I can go up in steps or go down in steps. So you can set it to pretty much exactly as bright as you want. That's wound right down now. Okay, that's it. Hope you enjoyed the video and um, I'll, uh, I'll make the STLs available for that adapter on uh, web, my website in the very, um, well, by the time you see this video, they should be up there. Thanks, Scott. Bye. The Halo light is now working. I've got a wireless remote control connected to it so I can turn it on and off. But not only that, when it's on, I can also control its brightness. I can have 25%, 50%, 100%, or I can change it to anything I like. Basically, if I click brightness on that, negative I can see every time I push it negative it drops down so I can adjust it to exactly what I want so that's the uh, RF wireless remote if we go up here I've, I've routed the cables all the way through to it and in the top here it's a 12 volt system so I already had a buck converter installed to power the other lights at the bottom. So I just wired in, and this is the wireless remote control. Oop, where is it? Receiver there. And that just basically goes in series with the power and then down to the halo light on the hot end. So it's as simple as that. These wireless remotes are available uh, from almost anywhere, AliExpress, eBay. I had this one for uh, quite some time and uh, just waiting to be used.